Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Update on Ian and eventually the impacts it could have on the Carolinas. Now, first and foremost, if you have friends or family in Florida, they need to be getting ready for a major hurricane, especially by the middle of the week. So time to get ready is now. There are still a couple of days to get ready for this thing, but for Florida, this could be a significant impact on the West Coast. So there's a look. The storm continues to gain strength today. One of the things you notice today from a meteorological standpoint, it's getting some very well of defined outflow. Outflow are these spiral bands starting to spread out in all directions. That means it's venting quite well. That means the exhaust system for this is allowing for the thunderstorms to build in the middle and get stronger. It's moving over some of the warmest water in the entire Atlantic. So there's no reason to think that this is not going to maybe rapidly intensify in the next two days. And you can see Hurricane Center brings it up to a Category 4 off the southwest coast of Florida. Now, some good news here is the storm will slowly weaken a little bit as it approaches the coast because of wind shear. But that's not all good news because as it gets closer to the coast here, it's also going to spread out and slow down so when it gets here the wind field will spread out which will allow for a long duration of wind pushing water so storm surge on the west coast could be significant and i think even some significant storm surge that might catch you off guard for areas of the big bend or excuse me the southeastern part of um up there towards georgia into jacksonville brunswick county area um, those areas in there could see some significant water because that's a big catch basin basically see that big arc there in the coast this acts often like um, like a funnel it will trap the water and force it inland and so these rivers especially around jacksonville could see higher water than you might expect with a system on the other side of florida then you could see right here this is where it's going to be uh, coming up on friday at 8 a.m so 8 a.m. Friday, we expect the system to be somewhere over Georgia. Now, the concern for the Carolinas is that it's going to slow down and meander over this area and allow for a long duration of rainfall pushing into the mountains, the foothills, and the coastal plain. At the same time, we're going to see high pressure to the north wedging itself in. So this potential could be pretty significant for some heavy rainfall. So if we look at the ensembles, just not one piece of guidance, the spread of every single model. This is the GFS. You could see some interesting things on the G GFS. The mean is right over the western part of the Carolinas. Um, but also notice there's a big cluster back to the west still and some near the coast. So pretty tightly clustered. You can see how, how close it is together here. And then all of a sudden it starts spreading out. Why does it do that? That's a sign that in the atmosphere is telling us that there's a weak steering current. So this is going to get kind of bogged down and meander. We can look at the super ensemble, which I really like looking at because it takes into account all of the various models. So you got the European, the GFS, the UK Met, and all of their ensemble members. Not one single run. You should never look at a single model run. You should look at the ensembles. And the mean right now, if you look carefully, right there is basically the Western Carolinas to the coastal plain. There are a couple out here, but the greens and yellows are showing you a much higher probability of this heading up now if it should move west of the mountains that's problematic for the carolinas because that would mean a lot of heavy heavy rainfall for us we already are under a slight risk for flash flooding friday into saturday so the fact that this is a day five forecast that we've already got a slight risk that means a 15 percent chance of flash flooding means the potential is there for friday into saturday and probably saturday into sunday if this went six or seven days in the future we certainly would have that probability so how much rain are we talking about let me show you all right let's talk about this setup going into the weekend so we're going to go through time i'll go through the middle of the week the first thing you notice there's a cold front attached to the system that is going to be a focus for rainfall way ahead of the of the hurricane. So as it moves to the north, we go through time. Um, I'm going to stop this right about here. So right now you're looking at 2 a.m. on the 30th. So that's coming up, you know, at the end of the week. We'll go to the morning hours on Friday. So Friday morning, here we are, the system's in Florida, but look what's going on to our north. We've got a high pressure system over New England. This is supplying northeast winds and a stalled front right here. So this fetch of moisture coming in is going to interact with that front and probably produce a heavy rain band north and east of the track of this system. So we'll go even further into Friday. Friday night, the rain starts to spread north. We go into late Friday, into early Saturday morning. Saturday morning, look at the heavy rain that is spreading into the Carolinas. This is Saturday morning, 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2, 2 p.m. We go into the afternoon now. Is it still over us by Sunday morning? Is it lifting north? It could meander around for a while. You see it even late Sunday night. 
Now we're moving into Monday. It's moving off the coast. And there we are. So it, this could be a two or three day event, depending on where it meanders. It could produce some significant rainfall. So how much rain are we talking about? Well, let's look at the Weather Prediction Center seven day rainfall forecast. And I'll go all the way out to the end of this. Let me move this to right here. And you can see roughly eh, as low as two inches to as much as a couple spots, six inches. So the only good news for the Carolinas is the fact that we're so bone dry right now that we probably can hold some of this water. If it wasn't for the fact that we've been so dry, we probably would have a serious uh, flash flood issue. But any of this rain falls in a short period of time, we could have rapid runoff. So you're looking at a, a significant amount of rainfall um, coming up Friday through probably early Sunday. So we'll keep an eye on this, but flooding is going to be our biggest issue. There will be some wind. Um, cannot rule out some wind associated with this as well. Um, let me show you that real quickly. So let's look at the wind potential. Obviously, we go through this week, not a lot going on. We'll get to later this week. Uh, we'll start going into Thursday. Let's get into Friday. Okay, you're starting to see some winds pick up, especially south of that front. And then we get closer to Saturday. You can see some winds in here. It doesn't look too bad right now. Most of these winds are in the 25 to 30 mile per hour range for gusts. So not off the charts. This is not a huge wind event, at least based on right now. And the fact that we're going to be so cool and stable because of that high pressure to the north, likely, let me back this up, I'll show you. This is a cool high pressure system to the north. This will likely keep things stabilized. But if there's a warm front in here, the area we'll have to watch for severe weather would be anywhere we see the warm air kind of meet up with the cold air, maybe basically a warm front right in there. And again, that's looking like Saturday morning. So we'll keep an eye on the severe weather threat. This is primarily to me a flash flood issue. Of course, I'll be tracking it throughout the week and I will post frequent updates as we get closer to the weekend.